Good evening, everyone. That was terrible. Good evening, everyone. All right, that was a little bit better, but uh, we do better than that in soup and salad with about 35 people. Can we try that again? Good evening, everyone. All right, I just want to make sure everybody's awake and ready for the word this evening. Did you enjoy that service we had today? Wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? On behalf of Pastor Wood and Calvary Gospel Church, we want to welcome everyone that's here. If you're visiting, we hope that you enjoy the service and come back and be with us again. Please stand for the reading of the word. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures in Psalms, the 46th chapter. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, skipping down to the 10th verse, be still, be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You ready to praise the Lord this evening? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we are so thankful for your blessings. We thank you for the word that we heard this morning. We are here expecting a great time and great blessings from you this evening. We ask that you bless everyone that's here. Put forth an effort to be here and to be a blessing. Bless every part of the service. Anoint our speaker, O God. Use him in a mighty way. Be with us again in the remainder of this service. We ask in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. 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 And amen. Keep standing. Don't sit down. Don't. I saw you heading for the chair. Good evening. I'll tell Pastor Foster if you'd throw us a little soup and salad, we'd have said that better. That's that's what the hook is there. Amen. Would you turn to three or four people and shake their hand right now and just tell them you're glad to see them at Calvary Gospel Church. Amen. Blessing and honor, glory and power be unto the ancient of days. From every nation, all of creation, bow before the ancient of days. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted oh god yes and your kingdom shall not pass away oh ancient of day would you clap your hands now let's sing it together blessing and honor from your heart sing blessing and honor glory and power be unto thee from every nation all of creation bow before the ancient of day every tongue in heaven and earth shall declare your glory every knee shall bow at your throne in worship you will be exalted O oh God and your shall not pass away O ancient of day your kingdom shall reign over all the earth sing it your kingdom shall reign over all the earth sing it to the ancient of day none can compare or none can compare to your matchless word Sing it to the ancient of day. Every tongue, every tongue in heaven and earth. In worship, you will be exalted, O God. And your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of day. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing it now. Your kingdom shall reign over all the earth. Sing it to the ancient of day. None can compare. None can compare to your majesty. 
ancient smoke. Singing to the ancient of men. Every tongue in heaven and earth. Heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you will be exalted, O oh God. And your kingdom shall not pass away. Oh, ancient of Oh, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Just a little bit more, Derek, a little bit more. Amen. Well, I went home this morning and I rejoice. Amen. And then I did it again. And then I fell asleep for about two hours. But I'm telling you, I was rejoicing in the Lord today. Somebody clap your hands and rejoice in the Lord right now. Pray for me, saints. <laughs> it is good to be in God's house tonight. Oh, I believe God's going to touch us. I believe he's going to bless us. Oh, he's going to help us because he loves us. We rejoice. I went down in the basement. Sure enough, there's one down there, brother. I checked it today. There's generators everywhere. The Holy Ghost of God is with us. Amen. Amen. Come on, believe with me for a minute. Father, touch every heart in here tonight. Believe with me, church. Father, touch every heart in here tonight. We know you've sent your servant with a word. We know your people are here to rejoice and bless you. Oh, God, as we pray together. Come on, church, pray with me as we pray together. As we pray for one another. As we pray for the bishop tonight, Lord, please touch him. Oh, God, the hunger for your anointing and for the power of your spirit. These congregants, these that are here, oh, God, bless us tonight. Bless us tonight. Bless us tonight. Bless us tonight. Bless us with your presence. Bless us with your word. Bless us with your power. Bless us, Lord. Bless us. Bless us. Now, would you clap your hands and praise him and thank him and give him honor? Give him glory. Hallelujah. He is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Amen. He is here. Holy, holy. I will bless his name again. Sing it, church. He is here, listen close, hear him, hear him calling out your name. He is here, you can touch him, yeah, you will never be. Sing it now from your heart. Yes, he is here. Hallelujah, he is, oh, we know you're here, Lord, amen, he is here, call it, holy, holy, I will bless his name again, oh, yes, he is here, listen, do you hear it? Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. He is here. You can touch him. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be. Amen. If you were blessed this morning as the ushers are coming forward, please prepare your hearts uh, for worship and have a seat. How many were blessed this morning? 
I am so excited. Um, I was in children's church this morning, so I know I am in for a double blessing tonight. Amen. And I know if you were here this morning or if you've ever heard Bishop Teal before, you definitely want to bless this man of God. Amen. Amen. So as you prepare your hearts, yeah. our ushers are coming forward. Father God, we thank you. We thank you and praise you to have this opportunity to hear your man of this man of God. Father, we ask that you use your offering for the preaching of your word, for the provision of witnesses, and for the proclamation of your works. Father, we thank you and bless your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, he will. That's right. Yeah. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he, you might as well get with me. That's as good as I get. That's the whole nine yards. Come on. <laughs> I know the Lord <laughs> will make a way, yes, he will. Listen, I know it can get bad out there. You may not have a friend you can talk to, but Jesus is available. <laughs> He'll talk with you, I know the Lord. Make a way, yes, you will. Listen to it now. Listen. You see, I have this friend in Jesus. Every day, every day, I'm able to talk to. <laughs> it doesn't matter what my circumstances are. He's able to see me through. Oh, he's able, able, able. I just go to him in prayer every day. Every day, every time Jesus meets me there, I know the Yes, he will. Oh, yes, he will. Here's your part. You gonna help me? Oh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, there's nothing too hard for him. Yes, he will. He's able. He's ready. And he's willing. We bless his name. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, He will. The devil, the devil is a big fat liar. Yes, yes. And he'll lie to you. Yes, 
take a hold of Jesus' hand And he will see you through I know the Lord will make a way Yes, he will I wish somebody would stand with me And you'd just sing from your heart Say, yes, he will Yes, he will Yes, he will Somebody testify he's able. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. You're not alone. You're not alone. There's somebody always with you. Do you feel it? His name is Holy Ghost. <laughs> he promised he'd see you through. I know the Lord will make a way. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. He will. He will. He will. He will. He will. Yes, he will. Oh, somebody clap your hands and praise the Lord. Somebody give God glory here tonight. To his name be honor and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has sent us a man. He has sent us a man to preach with power. And I love this, with conviction. Would you join me? Welcome Bishop Teal tonight. Amen. Bishop, come. Come on, give pastor a big God bless you. Glory to God. To all of the pastoral staff, to Dr. Wood in his absence, we bless and we praise God. My, you look good on a Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Amen. Touch three people and tell them you're in the right place at the right time. Would you do it? How many of you saved and glad about it? Come on, all right. We'll look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Come on, where's it at? Where's your rejoicing? Come on. Is your rejoicing still working? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We bless and we praise God. We honor the Lord in the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm glad to have one of my brothers in the gospel here tonight, Pastor Sylvester Williamson of the National Church of God here, amen, in D.C. Come on, give him a big God bless you. I love this man of God. I love this man of God. We are brothers, amen, and we bless and we praise God. Thank you, um, Mr. Joe Tate, for your ministry, for how you have served this man of God. Uh, pastor assigned you and he did properly. Amen. I'm glad you serve in me. I appreciate you so very much. I do. Thank you very much. Go with me to the book of Psalms. I'm not going to hold you long. You can remain standing. Psalms 119. All right. Okay. Whatever that meant. All right. I'm in, I'm in the spirit. Amen. Psalm 119, and meet me at verse 76. Psalm 119 and verse 76. If you're there, say, I am. Let I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to thy word unto thy servant, let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live, for thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause, but I will meditate in thy precepts. 
Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I be not ashamed. Verse 76, let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. Verse 77, let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. Let thy tender mercies come unto me. Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. And let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. Mercy, mercy me. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Mercy, mercy me. When you hear the phrase, thy merciful kindness, and when you hear the phrase, thy tender mercies, those two phrases in this pericope immediately put us in a context of covenant. When you hear David pleading and praying for merciful kindness, when you hear the psalmist make the request for thy tender mercies, those phrases put us into a context of covenant. The word that is used here for mercy is said. It is the idea of not just receiving from God what you don't deserve. It is not just the hindrance to a judgment or a condemnation. But when David prays for mercy, what he is doing is he is pulling on a covenant relationship that he has with God. We are now in a covenant context. Every blessing that God has for you is in the context of a covenant. God does not bless outside of covenant. Now he will let it rain on the just and the unjust. He, he, he'll let his son hit a sinner and hit a saint on the same day. But that is not the blessing. When we talk about being blessed, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am. <laughs> okay, uh, that's going to work in a minute. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am. When you are blessed, you are blessed within the context of a covenant. God does not bless outside of covenant. He blesses within the confines of covenant. And so we need Jesus. Because the covenant is not cut for us until Calvary. But on Calvary, when Jesus was mounted on that hill and shedded his blood, buried and raised on the third day, the covenant was cut, the covenant was ratified, the covenant is real. My announcement tonight is that the blood still has power and the cross still works. We are in covenant relationship with God. And because we are in covenant relationship with God, there is not a blessing that has ever been spoken by God, Father, that you are not available and accessible to. The Lord has decreed and declared you are blessed. And the reason you are blessed is because God cut covenant not with you. He cut covenant with himself. Oh, I need some Bible readers here. 
uh, God could not cut covenant with somebody else. He had to cut covenant with himself. When he looked around and tried to find somebody who could uh, sustain the covenant relationship, he couldn't do it. And so he cut covenant with himself on the cross. And now you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I don't know what that means. It simply means this, that whatever God gave Jesus, he's already given you. Oh God, if he raised Jesus up, he'll raise you up. If he anointed Jesus, you're already anointed. If Jesus is blessed, you're already blessed because the covenant was cut on Calvary and as you enter into Christ, you enter into a covenant context and now there is nothing that can keep you from being blessed. If the enemy was going to try to keep you from a blessing, he should have caught you before you got to Christ because now that you are in Christ, you are blessed and the devil can't do a thing about it. Mercy. I'm asking you to do what you have promised. I'm asking for mercy. This is based on relationship and not religion. You don't pray this unless you really know him. He's asking God for the fullness. Give me everything that you have placed in the covenant. I need you to mercy, mercy me. There's not a person in this room who doesn't need to be mercied. So I don't know if that's a word. I told you I'm a preacher. I can make up words. It's everybody up in here needs to be mercied. Everyone up in here needs to experience God's best for your life. Everyone in here is dealing with some kind of sense of hindrance, some kind of opposition to the purpose of God in your life. But tonight you can get the context and the covenant that God has called you for. You can get everything that God died for you to have, but it's only going to come through mercy. Uh, lift your hands all over this building and just say this, Lord. Mercy, mercy, me. I need to be mercied. I want the covenant privileges of God and I want everything. You can put your hands down, thank you. I want everything. Oh, you want some more. Okay, I'm sorry. You looking for more. Okay, all right, I'm preaching to you then. Glory to God. Mercy, mercy, me. God manifests his mercy personally. God manifests his mercy personally. God manifests his mercy personally. Here's what I like about God. God knows how to tailor make, customize, and specialize your mercies. Because there's some mercies you need today that you didn't need yesterday. You need mercy every day, but there are some different mercies that you need. And what God does is God manifests his mercy personally to each and every one of us. God's going to come into the context and in your life, and he's going to give you the mercy that you need. He is going to hand you a covenant promise and a covenant privilege to get you through whatever you got to go through. And so, if you're broke, look straight. You having some financial issues, God's got mercies for your monies. Uh, you, you got a struggle in your marriage, God's got mercies for your marriage. You got struggles on your job, God's got mercies for that job. You got struggles in your mind, God's got mercies for your mind. And what does that mean? It means that when your mind is messing with you, you got to go get some mercy. Where do I get it from? You got to get it out of context of covenant. Let me help you. Every name of God is a promise. Every name that God reveals to you encouched in that name is not only the revelation of his person, it is also the redemption of a promise. 
When God told you my name is Jehovah Jireh, he wanted you to go to bed at night knowing uh, he's already provided. Uh, his name is Jehovah Shalom, which means you've already got your peace. His name is Jehovah to sit canoe. You've already got your righteousness. His name is Jehovah um, Kadesh. You've already got your sanctification. His name is Jehovah Yeshua. And that is you already have your salvation. Every name of God is a promise. And you can go to God and you can ask him mercy. Mercy, mercy me, because if you mercy me, I've got to get a miracle. If you mercy me, a door is about to get open. If you mercy me, my body's about to get healed. If you mercy me, the devil is coming up under my foot. If you mercy me, I'm blessed coming and I'm blessed going. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and never beneath. He gave me mercy. Mercy, mercy me. I need mercy for me. I need some Sean Teal customized, personalized mercies. Because, see, you don't struggle with the stuff I struggle with because you're more sanctified and more saved than I am. So I got to have my own personal mercies. And so this is what God does for me every morning. He cooks me up a new batch of mercies. Because he, he know me like he know you. And he know on Monday, tomorrow, I'm going to need a fresh batch of those same mercies. I'm going to need some mercy tomorrow that I didn't use today. But God does not retread his mercy. He doesn't rehash his mercy. He don't heat it back up the next day and give you leftover mercy. He's going to give you no mercy every morning and so somebody when you get up tomorrow I need you to go to work tomorrow and you just let the devil know oh, I ain't dealing with Sunday mercy I'm dealing with Monday mercy and you could have caught me on Sunday and might have got away with it but not today because I got new mercy every day I have what I need in my relationship with God covenant 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 Would you look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God's going to bless you, even if you don't want to be blessed. Okay, I'm going to try that one more time. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God's going to bless you, even if you don't want to be blessed. Here's what Paul said. He always causes us to triumph. Come on, Bible readers. He always causes us to triumph. There are days I want to lose. There are days I want to quit. There are days my flesh wants to give in. There are days I don't want to be all of this. There are days I wish I didn't have all this calling on my life. There are days I don't feel like being anointed. I don't feel like ministering. I don't feel like being bothered with nobody. But on the days when I'm weak and I feel like I'm about to fail, he causes me to triumph. He makes me triumph. He pushes me into a victory. I can't lose if I wanted to lose. He going to bless me even if I don't want to be. And you only get that with mercies. Grace is God giving you what you don't deserve. Mercy is God not giving you what you do deserve. So can I get a 15 second praise for some mercy? Can I get some, huh? all right, uh huh. Somebody look back over your life and praise God he didn't give you what you deserve. Somebody right now, just take a moment, have your flashback, look back over your life and praise God that he didn't kill you when you should have been dead. He didn't take you out when you should have been out. He held you up. He blessed you anyhow. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Who in here will testify? I've got personalized mercies. Should have been dead. 
Come on now. Would have been dead. Could have been dead. Should have had an HIV, got some AID and DIE, but God kept me. Mercy. Mercy me. Listen to the prayer of David. Lord, I need you to mercy me. Now, when he says mercy me, a couple things in Cows in the text. Let me show them to you. First thing, he says, um, Lord, I pray thee, let your merciful kindness be for my comfort. Lord, I want you to shalom me. That word comfort, speaking to the shalom of God. Lord, I want you to shalom me. Now, when God shaloms you, he does not take away the aggravation. When God shaloms you, he does not remove the opposition. Let me preach. When God gets ready to shalom you, it is not the absence of an aggravation. It is God's presence on you in the midst of the aggravation. Uh, I'll try it again. And so here you are in the situation that's getting on your nerves. And you are tired of this. You didn't put up with this long enough. She get in your face one more time. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. He got to say that to you one more time. If you go on that job tomorrow and they say that to you again, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a moment. You've been praying, but they're about, to, they're about to see the other side of you. Before you do that, you need to ask God to Shalom me. Come on, somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, shalom me. Because they ain't going to change, so you got to do something with me. They going to be acting the same way tomorrow, so you got to work something in me. When I go back home, I know how they've been acting, but you better get me ready so I ain't got to swing when I come through the door. You better shalom me. Let it be for my comfort. Calm me down. Because this is getting on my nerves. The stuff David is facing, the stuff he's dealing with. Listen, now he talks about these who are perverse and those who are trying to shame him. He is dealing with opposition. He is dealing with an aggravation. He is dealing with a frustration. But he says, Lord, in the midst of all of this, mercy me. Shalom me so I can get through this moment and not rob you of your glory. Uh. Number two, number two, listen to what he says. He says, according to your word unto thy servant, comfort me. Verse 77, let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. That I may live. What he's saying is, Lord, I need you to secure me. I need you to shalom me because my circumstance may not change. So I need your presence on me even when I'm frustrated. But Lord, I need you to secure me. Give me mercy, watch this, that I may live. You know why some of us just won't go ahead and live? It's because we don't feel secure. You know why there are some people not in ministry right now? They're not secure. You know what your sense of strength comes from? Knowing that God puts you where you are. And that God is in charge of keeping you where he puts you. I can't live trying to be you. I can't live trying to act like you want me to act. I 
can't live with you trying to put your rules and your ritual and all of your religion on me. I can't live like that. I need God to mercy, mercy me because I need to have the security to know that God is backing me up and that I'm going to make it through this and whatever I'm going through, at the end of it, he going to let me live. He going to secure me, support me, and strengthen me. Look at somebody and tell them, I got to live. You want me to wear brown, I like blue. I got to live. You want me acting like T.D. Jakes, I want to be Sean Teal. Uh, you gonna have to let me live. I'm not your ex-husband, you gonna have to let me live. Do I even look like your ex-wife? You gonna have to let me live. You gonna leave me alone and let God work in me, mercy. Mercy me. I want to live, but I can't live without the mercy of God. Because if you try to live after, without the mercy of God, you are only under the pressure of people. I give myself a little more room these days. I didn't always do that. I give myself a little more latitude these days. Because I finally discovered it. This is going to mess some of y'all up. But I finally discovered it. God's grace is bigger than my sins. What he say? You will never be secure as long as you think you are on a spider web over hell God waiting to zap you the minute you mess up. You won't do anything for God, fearing that God is out to get you. Can I tell you, God's not the old white man with the long beard sitting on the throne with a thunderbolt in his hand. That's Zeus. That ain't God. God is not the bad policeman looking for you down the beat. God's not trying to destroy you. God wants you to live. And so what you got to ask God for is give me the mercy that I need so I can be secure in what you called me to be so I'm not intimidated by people and not intimidated by circumstance. Watch this. Not even intimidated by my own sins. Did I tell y'all David wrote this? Y'all, you, you, you know he's a valedictorian of mercy. No, no, no. David is summa cum laude mercy. Y'all. If anybody knew the mercy of God, oh, y'all don't know. Y'all just think he the sweet singer of Israel. Oh, y'all forgot. Y'all just think he's the anointed king. Y'all forgot. All right, y'all forgot. Okay, that's Jesse's boy. No, he more than that. He's also the murderer of Uriah. He's also, oh, come on now, the lover of Bathsheba. Come on now. You got to watch David because he will cut your throat, take your woman, and then go write a song. Mercy, mercy me. When you got that down in you, you need some mercy. David said, I want to live. I don't want to be intimidated by my circumstances. I don't want to be intimidated even by my own imperfections. I need you to secure me. But then watch this, watch this, watch the text, watch the text. He says, um, let the proud be ashamed because they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But while they're looking at my stuff, I'm going to meditate in your precepts. They're looking at me, but I'm looking at your word. They're looking at me but I'm looking at your word. Now here's the good thing. If people are looking at you in your imperfection, don't look back at them. Keep looking in the word. Y'all, come on, I want to preach a little bit. 
Stop looking at the people who are looking at your imperfections. And while they're looking at you, you keep your eye on that word. Because while you're looking in the word, you're looking, James said, in a mirror. And if you start working that word, you're going to start looking better. They still looking at you. You still looking at the word. They looking at you. You looking at the word. They looking at you. You looking at the word. While you're looking at the word, you're getting better. While you're looking at the word, you're getting stronger. While you're looking at the word, you're being more sanctified. While you're looking at the word, you're growing up in the things of God. While you're looking in the word, you're getting stronger, better. Everything God wants to do in your life is coming to pass. Now they keep looking. Now they're going to look again. Because now you don't look like the person they've been looking at because while they were looking at you, you were looking at the word. And you were getting better while they were getting critical. You were getting holier while they were being more judgmental. Come on, lift your hands and say, Lord, mercy, mercy, me. Watch this, watch this, watch this. So he said, I got all these folk around me, but I'm staying in your word. Now watch this. Let those that fear thee turn unto me. I want you to shalom me. I want you to secure me. But Lord, I want you to surround me. I want you to surround me. Some of y'all look like you've been waiting on a place to shout during this message. This might be your spot right here. He said, Lord, I want you to surround me. I got these perverse, proud folk looking in my life trying to judge me. But I've been looking at your word and I've been asking for mercy. <laughs> now, those that fear you, let them turn unto me those that fear you let them now turn unto me what are you asking for David I'm asking for a new crowd I'm looking around me and I see these folks now I want you Lord to find me somebody who fears you and put somebody uh -huh, in my life who fears you. That ain't blessing you like it ought to, so let me help you. The word fear here is the word worship. The word fear here is speaking of reverential awe of God in a worship experience. I will remind you, it's a praise and worship leader who wrote this. He said, Lord, I want you to put some folk around me who know how to worship you and who know how to praise you. I need you to mercy, mercy me. Let me help somebody. You need a few people in your life that you can call and celebrate with. Um, have you ever had something good happen in your life? And you picked up the phone and went to call somebody and then hung the phone up. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. You, you, something great happened in your life and you picked up the phone, like, oh, I'm going to call him. No, nah, I better not call him. Oh, I know, I call. No, nah, I better not call her either. Because we know we got some folk around us. Uh, they hating on us. Come on, y'all. I don't preach a whole lot on haters. I get tired of a whole bunch of preachers always talking about your haters. Because this is what I discovered. I don't have a lot of enemies. I got a lot of folk probably around me that don't need to be around me. But I don't have a lot of enemies. Because the definition of an enemy is someone who has the potential to hinder what God is doing in your life. Okay, I'll try that one more time. Definition of an enemy is somebody who has the potential to hinder what God is doing in your life. Announcement, you ain't got that many enemies. You better just keep the one devil up under your feet because he's about the worst enemy you got. You ain't got to worry about your haters. Your haters have been handled. Lift your hands and say, Lord, mercy, 
mercy mercy me I need you to put some people around me who are gonna be excited when they see you doing something in my life I need you God to put some folk in my life that when I call them they get to shouting around the coffee table because I got blessed put somebody in my life who wants to bless me who wants to help me put somebody in my life who knows how to praise the Lord and is not hating on me Don't you want God to put some people in your life? When they see you get a new car, they buy you a gas card. Don't, don't you wish you had somebody, when your weave was better than theirs, they would at least compliment yours? Don't you wish that when you bought a new house, you could invite them in and they wouldn't try to set it on fire, you know? David said, Lord, put some worshipers around me because who surrounds you controls your atmosphere. And that's why you got to stay in praise because if you stay in praise, God will inhabit, come on y'all, Psalm 22 and 3, the praises of his people. If you praise God, he will surround you. If you praise God, he will keep you. If you praise God, he'll bring some people in your life who will bring some joy and praise when they come. Finally, he said, Lord, mercy, mercy me. Verse 80, let my heart be sound in thy statutes that I be not ashamed. Lord, I want you to settle me. I want you to settle me. Let your word be sound in me. Settle me. Should I do this or should I do that? Should I go here or should I go there? What to do next? Lord, settle me. I need you to ground me in the place where I am so I'm not always trying to run from where I am. Some of us are in town right now. Not because you were moving, it's because you were running. You do know there's a difference between moving and running. Example, you move in the day, you run at night. All right, I'll try that again. If you're taking furniture out of an apartment at about midnight, you're running. That ain't moving, honey. That's running. Settle me. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, mercy, mercy, me. Settle me. That's what God's going to do with his mercy because you're not in covenant relationship with him. He's about to settle some issues. Things that have not had closure, let me prophesy. Okay, I prophesy, uh-huh. He's about to bring closure to things that have been upended. Uh, legal matters that have not been released. He's about to settle some issues. Things that you have not understood. He's about to settle those issues. Why my mama? Why my daddy? Why did I have to grow up the way I grew up? Why am I here? What is going on? Why did I lose that job? Why am I in foreclosure? What's going on with this? Everything was well. How did I get in bankruptcy in less than a year what happened to me what is going on with me the Lord said he's about to settle you so you're not always upended and in an upheaval over what's going on in your life he's about to settle you he's going to make you sound in his words um, when we were coming up um, we got well how I say it we grew up broke. <laughs> po. Not poor. Because if you're poor, you can afford the O and the R. 
when you're po, it's just P-O. We, we, we grew up po. That's all right. That's all right. Look at me now, the Lord. Doesn't know. I grew up po. Uh, and when you grow up po, um, Christmas is different than other people's. Y'all looking like y'all ain't got a clue what I'm talking about. Well, I'm just saying when you when you broke, you know, you grew up in the hood and broke, Christmas is just different. Um, Christmas is like you get most of what you need and one thing that you want. Right? So you be under the Christmas tree, you be breaking open, you know, packages and you be looking for stuff, socks. Two white tube socks. Y'all ain't ready. You oh you on the Christmas tree, you opening up stuff. Hey, 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 you know, T-shirts. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You're getting what you need. And then my mama would muster up maybe one thing, but she had six of us. No husband. In the hood. Come on, y'all, work with me. So all six ain't getting individual little toys and stuff that's that's a little too much so what my mama would do she would buy something that we could all play with <laughs> and one year one year um um she bought a clown in the house it was a tall clown yeah and um she put it in the room and uh, my brother punched it. Little blow up clown, about that. And my brother punched the clown. And that clown leaned back and snapped back. Y'all ain't never seen that, you know what I'm talking about? And so I, I wanted to do that. I wanted to do that. I hit a poof. One of them hood hits, you know. Poof. Went down, came back up. I ran and got my other brother. Come in, you got to see this. You got to see this. Hit it. Hit it. Poof. Went back, snapped back. Wow. Went and got my other brother. Five boys, one girl. Got my other brother. Yeah, pray for my mama. That's right. Uh huh. And uh, he come in. Dude, man, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Poof, look at that, poof, it's come back. Oh, Lord, look at it, it come back. Every time you hit it, it go back and it snap back. Every time you hit it, it go back and it snap back. So I asked my brother Michael, I said, what is, what is that? What is that? He said, I don't know, but it's something on the bottom of that. It's like something in there. It's like something on the bottom of, I don't know if it's sand or whatever it is, but every time you hit it, It'll snap back because there's something in the bottom of that thing that every time you hit it is guaranteed to snap back. Every time you hit that thing, it's guaranteed to snap back because the manufacturer put it in the toy before we got it. So every time a thing gets hit, it has the power to snap back. I think I'll preach to you. I'm on my way to the close. Can I tell somebody that when God mercy mercies you, he going to put down in you the snap back that you need. And on the days you take a hit, go on and take a hit. He going to let you come on back. I came to tell somebody mercy is a ministry of a comeback and if you want to make a comeback all you need to do is lift your hands say Lord mercy 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 me high five your neighbor take a neighbor I'm about to make a comeback I've been hit but I'm coming back took some scars but I'm coming back had some pain but I'm coming back been wounded but I'm coming back God will settle you. Whatever was in the bottom of that thing, it settled it. So that every time it took a hit, it could make a comeback. 
God has settled you. God loves you. God loves you. God, let's say, ain't nobody flew you all the way to California and tell me nobody in God loves you. God. <laughs> God loves you. But I've got a better announcement than that. God wants you. On your feet all over this building. Musicians, please come softly. For every need you have, there's a mercy. Do not let the enemy disqualify you. Making you think that you're not up for the blessings that God has for you. I'm telling you, he's going to bless you, not because you're going to do everything right. He's going to bless you because he pulled you into his covenant. And he's going to bless you even if you don't want to be blessed because now you're in the house, you're in the family, and you can't live in my house and not get blessed. Come on, somebody. If I moved you in my house tomorrow, you can't live in my house and not be blessed. Live in my house, I'm going to do something for you. Come on, I got some cornflakes and some milk for you. You're going you to get something in my house, I'm going to bless you. You're in the family of God. You're not working to get blessed. You're already blessed. You have received the mercies of God. Heads about. This altar call is not going to be for everybody, but it will be for somebody. You say tonight, I want a fresh touch of God on my life and I need the mercy. I need the mercy. I need God to shalom me. I need God to support me. I need God to secure me and I need God to surround me with the right kind of people. Tonight I want to lay hands on somebody who's coming out of a difficult separation of relationship. I need you to get to the altar. I'm in a season right now, man of God, I've been torn away from a relationship and it hurts. And I don't know what God is doing. I don't even like it. But would you pray with me? Come on, I'm going to pray for you. I'm in a difficult season. I'm in a season of separation. God's taking people out of my life. God's moving people out of my life and I don't understand it and I don't even like it. But mercy, there's mercy, there's mercy. I want to pray. Would you grab somebody by the hand? This is just the first of what the Lord's telling me to do. Hold somebody by the hand. Now I need you to pray for them right now. You don't have to know anything about them. Just ask the Lord to give them the mercy that they need. Come on, pray. I'm about to pray at this altar, but I need you praying where you're standing. Come on, come on, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. I'm living this because of you I want to thank you and praise you too. glory to God lift your hands lift your hands your grace and mercy the Lord secures you Nothing else intimidates. 
Whatever you have determined that has been your lack and your deficiency, I come against it now in Jesus' name. Loose oh, yes. your mind. Oh, yes. The Lord mercies your mind. The Lord mercies your mind. You shall not be afraid. You will not be intimidated. The letter you receive, let it not intimidate. Let it not produce fear. Trust God. Father, we bless you for the seasons of separation. Seasons of separation. Not one season. Seasons of separation. It's not loss. It's preparation for gain. Father, in the name of Jesus, minister to your daughter in another season of separation. Grant her, oh God, your mercy that will carry her through. Surround her, surround her in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You'll trust. You will trust. You'll trust again. You'll believe and you'll believe more. The enemy's been trying to depress you 